Hi there everyone, welcome back. Flower themed cards are my favorite kind of greeting card to make. In this card making tutorial, I'll share three of my crafting secrets to effortless and dynamic flower card bouquets. For this flower card, I'll focus on parts of the Vintage Dream Ensemble from Altenew. As always, crafting materials I use are linked in the description box. This is Delightful Day Layering Stamp Set. This gorgeous flower is a beautiful evolution and perfect pair to the Beautiful Day stamp set from Altenew. This layering floral stamp set is meant to easily be used with the Altenew stamp wheel. I'm going to line up the crosshairs in the center of the flower stamp with the crosshairs on the flip plate of the stamp wheel. The best way for me to do this is by aligning the crosshair on the stamp to one of the grid lines of my Altenew craft mat. Then I can overlay the crosshair of the stamp wheel flip plate to the flat side of the stamp, aligning the crosshair. So now theoretically all I have to do is rotate the flip plate on my stamp wheel stage, and the layering stamp should be in alignment, or at least give me an easy reference to layering the stamp images. I like to conserve cardstock real estate, so I'm aligning the outline to a corner of an A2 panel, of Nina Solar White cardstock in 110 pounds. I'm stamping the outline layer in Strawberry Crisp dye ink from Frozen Delights Mini Ink Cube Set. I'm going for a soft coral sunset peony palette for this set of blooms. Next, I'll use Orange Sorbet in the first solid layer, following the layering guide found on the Altenew packaging. Then from 4 Scoops Mini Ink Cube Set, I'll use Peach Perfect for the detail layer. Finally, I'll use Cotton Candy Mini Ink Cube to finish the petal layers. Here's the final result of layering Delightful Day Stamp Set with these colors. I could stamp these images again in the same sequence, but I used inks from two different sets, Frozen Delights and 4 Scoops. I can make an interesting dynamic with a similar palette by simply replacing two of the ink layers with other colors. I'll replace the outline and first solid layer inks with lemon ice and mango smoothie for a more yellowish color shift. To stamp this new color layer, I'll start with mango smoothie so I can still see the outline to this flower. Then I'll start the first solid layer with Lemon Ice Crisp Dye Ink. Next, I'll use Peach Perfect, just as I did for the first flower. Then finally, Cotton Candy for the final detail layer. I want to bring down the yellow area of this flower just a little bit, so let me show you this trick to soften color transitions. With the solid layer image, I'm going to partially ink the center of the flower with Peach Perfect. Then with a mini ink blending brush, I'll pounce the brush on the edges of the inked area to diffuse and blend the ink. Finally, I'll stamp the image with this diffused ink layer to help soften the yellow in the edges of the petals. I'll repeat this ink diffusing technique with cotton candy more concentrated in the center of the flower. Those are my two blooms for now. I'll repeat this color shifting on the leaves of Delightful Day stamp set. The rotating alignment mechanism is apparent on the leaves as well, and I'll use Sweet Dreams Crisp Dye Ink Set to stamp the group of images. I'll start with Teal Cave for the outline, Dew Drops for the first layer, Aqualicious for the second layer, then back to Teal Cave for the final layer. Here are all the inks I used in Sweet Dreams Crisp Dye Ink Set. I did not use Galactic Stream in this first grouping. For this next group, however, I'll shift the color values to the darker side by using Galactic Stream, Teal Cave, and Aqualicious. Like flowers and foliage found in nature, some leaves face more towards the sun or are higher in the canopy than others. By varying the color values, we make a more realistic floral scene. 
So now you'll see the contrast of the second bundle of leaves in comparison to the first. And I repeated the darker color group on a second branch. Now we have a more dynamic palette just by shifting values and mixing inks. Another design element we can mix and match for cards is texture. Off camera I went ahead and gold powder heat embossed the smaller flower branches and sentiment. I also heat embossed the center flower layer. I love that heat embossing adds a raised textural element as well as shine. We can use shine to our advantage to draw our eyes to focal points such as sentiments or around the bouquet. To offset the flat cardstock of the layering images, we can use an embossing folder to quickly make a background to perfectly frame the flower and leaf layers. This luxurious motif embossing folder is part of the Vintage Dream Ensemble, and it creates the most beautiful medallion motif for any card. I have already added this embossed panel to an A2 folded note card base. Now we can put all of this together. I start with my focal points, that is the two blooms, and my sentiment. I like to arrange and frame the flowers and sentiment within a triangular shape. Then I fill around the flowers with the die cut leaf layers and smaller branches to help support the arrangement. This is the creative formula that has always worked for me, but I'm sure you've seen people make gorgeous arrangements in their own style. I don't have glue on any of these elements, so I love the glad press and seal trick to lift the entire arrangement so I can expose the backs of the die cut pieces and apply liquid adhesive first. I like to use glossy accents to hold down smaller elements like the foliage and branches. Then I like to stack instant dimension foam tape to get lots of height and even more forward depth in my bouquet. Yes, this makes for a thicker card, but for the majority of the time I hand deliver cards, so I'm not worried about the post flattening my cards. I usually place my sentiment last, since this is my most foreground element. I like to make sure that my sentiment is horizontally flat on my card front. I use the stamp wheel as a grip mat and a ledge to place my T-square, so that I have a horizontal reference line when placing the die cut sentiment. For final touches to this card, I use a mix of sequins. I have satin gold sequins from Altenew. I like to use sequins to frame sentiments since shiny elements grab the attention of your recipient. And then metallic splatters from the metallic watercolor pan sets as an overall filler for the bouquet. That is my finished card with three elements for perfect flower arrangements. We looked at dynamic palettes, mixing textures, and bountiful bouquet arranging. This video is part of the all to new April 2023 video hop. I have the full list of participants in the description box if you're looking for even more inspiration from my crafty friends. Please like their videos, subscribe if you haven't already, and let them know you appreciate them. Thank you so much for watching my crafting tutorial for beautiful flower cards. I hope to see you again very soon.